Diamond sees a bird. The girls have had to wait all day to come out. <laughs> it wasn't easy. It's not easy for me either. Jade will just not stop asking. She gets so bored. She's, you know, she's a Pisces. She's got lots of energy. Ruled. Good girl, Diamond. Stay here. Stay here, Diamond. Lay down. I love this chunky blanket. I just did my ex-husband's chart. He wanted me to do it. I was very confused. First I did tropical, so I went back to double check, and sure enough, I accidentally, it just defaulted to tropical. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Sabrina, psychic, medium, and traditional witch -a. got my hair done today and raise your hand and let me know in the comments below since it seems like that's the one and only day that my hair looks its best I put it up I didn't even get any highlights yet I was thinking about going back and getting them done but I'm not sure that I actually need to I don't know we'll see it's so silky and so shiny and uh, the white hairs are colored it, it's just it makes such a big difference. So I thought, well, let me get on today <laughs> and make a video since I look presentable. I didn't even change my top because I didn't want to mess up my hair or my false eyelashes. So now I look presentable. I have mentioned recently that my ex was actually very interested in me doing his astrological chart and I told him I'd been really studying sidereal astrology which goes by the stars and he said yeah and so he said that he found out his birth time it was just 3 p.m. I said wait a minute just 3 p.m. <laughs> you know it's usually got like 311 307 he said well they don't really do that in my country so that's all I had to do to go by and then I couldn't find the city that he lives in with the software that I'm using. So I had to basically use the, uh, what did he call it? Something like the district, which I think in our area, in my area would have been probably called the county. And so I put, what did I put? Paita? Yeah, Paita, which is... A district that encompasses Piura and his little tiny town, Arenal, which is where he was born. It has hardly grown at all since he was born there. And so, uh, yeah, I did his chart. Didn't take me long. At first, when I did the tropical, I went, oh my gosh, you're like the mirror image of me. You are a Cancer. No, excuse me. You are a... Uh, Pisces, which we thought he was, with a Cancer rising. And then I said, let me go back and make sure my settings are correct, just to make sure. Sure enough, it had defaulted to tropical, and I had to change the settings to sidereal. I also chose a chart that's called whole houses, so that you don't see things that are overlapping. And that really makes it a lot easier to read. You know, through the years, off and on, especially over the past few years, I would think, gosh, I wonder if he was something like an Aquarius or a Gemini, because I don't really think I'm compatible with those people as far as a life partner or a spouse. You know what I mean? You might like and love someone, but they might not make you the best husband. Now, I have said... Years ago, I think back when I was in my downtown apartment with my daughter, I made a video called Mr. No, I didn't. What was it? Anyway, Mr. Wrong was Mr. Right. Why did I say that? Because 
if I had not gone through all the things that we went through, because I went through what he was going through, <laughs> and, and then he went through what I was going through, right? We went through it together. And when I did numerology, which I have found to be very accurate and a lot quicker and easier to read and interpret. Um, I found that the only thing, well, I should say the only path we had in common was children. I've also mentioned that in cultures many years ago, it was considered very fortunate for you to be able to have children. And the more children you had, the more envy you were of your neighbors. Your, in, your neighbors would be more envious of you the more children you had. You were considered to be wealthy and lucky. Why? Well, because you were going to have more resources to draw upon to help you at home or to help you when you get older, right? If two of them don't want to do it, well, maybe one of the other two will want to do it. See? But Times have changed, and that is just no longer the case. Uh, some people are different. You know, those of us that love children are, are sentimental, and he's from a culture where it's just all about the family, which includes your children. Um, but I thought, you know, he's got to be either like an Aquarius or a Gemini. You know what, guys? I hit the nail right on the head because his son is an Aquarius and his rising is Gemini. Wow. Is my intuition spot on or what? And here's the other thing. Like I've said, Mr. Wrong was Mr. Right. I remember my sister said to me when she joined the Air Force, she had to take an assessment. And the assessment was, uh, you know, where her strengths and her weaknesses were. And so they put her in a clerical position. And she said something and I said, well, why didn't they put you in the area that you were the strongest in? And she said, because they put you in the position that you have the very weakest uh, score in so that you will develop that skill. This is what we come to Earth for. Earth is a school. And we come here to struggle and to strive. And the more that we strive, the more we grow. Now, sometimes it just feels like it's too much, but there have been two things in both of our charts that gave us the strength to carry on. Some people would literally just walk away. Other people might do something much more drastic. And, you know, we went through several financial <laughs> problems, which I had talked about, and it was like a pressure cooker, really. Um, and our house was falling apart around us, and, you know. So we learned about how to use money and, you know, regard it highly and save some money or invest some money, which I finally got him to do later. Uh, but, and you know, one of the reasons that I had walked away from the marriage was because he had declared that he was going Sorry, somebody's calling me. Oh. He was going to go back to his home country. Now, this was very confusing to me for a while. It took me an entire day. Okay, I don't want to answer you. Go away. To wrap my head around this. But once I realized that if we had really been compatible, you know, like he was the mirror opposite of me, then... Uh, we really would not have grown as much. Excuse me. I'll be Sorry. Uh, this one guy who for some reason parks over here by my space has parked halfway in my space tonight. And he lives across the way in the other building over there. Why he doesn't park in the empty spaces over there to give him a closer walk is so weird to me. Okay. So... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is what a chart with whole houses looks like. So there's nothing overlapping. I can clearly see. And I've done a lot of research, so I've been able to say, yes, I can see what that means, this and that. Um, 
And basically how he was, I, I was not able to understand him. And that's why I think this is so valuable. If you want to understand your children, this is one way to do it and to help guide them to find their purpose. I really want to talk about the North Node. Now mine is directly across from my ascendant, but my ex-husband's is not. You don't know him. He hasn't been on camera. So, I mean, his name is Victor, but anyway, his North Node is over here in Taurus, right by his ascendant. And oh my gosh, when I found out what that means, it fits. So it is just, mine is directly across from my ascendant, and it happens to be in Virgo. But what his is actually um, trying to say here is that he wanted to be able to provide for his family, but he couldn't. You know, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. He was not ambitious, and his placement of Saturn here in the second house, uh, which for him is Cancer, uh, there's Saturn and Pluto in the home and family. Along with him being a Gemini in the first house, he was critical, especially of himself, and Saturn was just making it harder. So along with his thick accent and the fact that he had this dark skin, he just always felt like, you know, the sore thumb that sticks out. And he gets very um, upset with people that have trouble understanding him. And some people are just flat out rude, like, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, come on, refrigerador. How hard is that? It's re refrigerator. Some people just, they really don't have any kind of a ear for any other language except for English. So, you know, he reverted, uh, what's the word? He kind of delegated all of that stuff to me talking on the phone, ordering when we go out to eat. One waitress said to me, um, why are you speaking for him? And I said, excuse me, this is my marriage, not yours. Um, he asked me to order. Can't he order for himself? I said, he asked me to order. And there goes your tip. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hard. It was frustrating. And in a way, he kind of just, you know, kept delegating all of that to me, but he just felt very out of place, and what it indicates here in his sun sign Aquarius, it's so interesting, um, being ruled by Mercury, he's supposed to be good at communications, very intelligent, lots of air, Mercury and Aquarius with the sun, this really indicates a problem with the father father not really being there. He wasn't. He left uh, to go find work. His mother was left alone. He reveres the mother very much. And he did tell me recently that he wished that he had made more money. I could have stayed home, right, to focus on being a mother and a housewife, which is all I ever really wanted to be. I just didn't want to be dirt poor. And when I did stop working, I had to make the trade-off. If I wasn't going to work, I was going to have to give up lifestyle. Boy, did I ever. So, yeah. Um, but there uh, we have, I put in his part of fortune. It is in Leo, and that has a lot to do with being a parent, you know, and, and being a, a soldier. So he has a moon in Aries, and that gave him the will to keep going. Now, with his Saturn in Cancer, he had uh, we had hardships, but he also had a discipline. You know how I've said Saturn is a turtle? He had to get up every day and go to work, and he did that even when he was sick. I learned that from him. I learned that type of a discipline from him, except when I was really sick and I couldn't go to work. It just happened a lot in my life. But yeah, um, the hard work and the discipline did pay off, and it is looking at the, um, well, it's got a line to the sixth house, but really, from where the uh, first house is, it is 
something to do with also the fifth house in that on his mind was his children and so it was it was it was more difficult he could be nasty with his words he really could if i would say something or comment or be frustrated you know well i make enough money for me or um you know i'm doing all i can and um i can't leave you alone all the time with the kids right so it was a constant battle it was a constant struggle as to what he was able to do, what he was willing to do, what he was comfortable with. He was already experiencing discrimination. Now, when he finally went to a factory where they have to measure and cut things very precisely, he likes that. That's a Gemini trait. That's not a Pisces trait, really. Um, and boy, I noticed when we first married, if he met someone who talked Spanish, I couldn't get him to shut up. And there have been several times in our life when we did start talking as, you know, he developed a stronger grasp of the English language when I had to tell him, okay, can we stop talking about this now? <laughs> so that's a Gemini. They can just talk and talk and talk about a subject matter. And so if you think of Donald Trump, you know, they're constantly communicating, talking, tweeting. So there, there can be good with public relations and... He's never been able to actually use all of those traits, except for one. And it seems that from his fourth house of home and family where he's got Neptune, there's a line to Taurus, which is at his twelfth house. So in his subconscious mind is the desire to have financial security. And a lot of times the ninth house will point to foreign lands. And in order for him to acquire that, he decided to leave his country and come here and get married. And uh, the struggle was real, but he did end up becoming more prosperous than he ever would have if he had stayed in his country. He didn't want to end up like his father, having to, you know, go off and never come back home because of work. And there was a time where we were separated and he was working out of town with a co-worker in another state and uh, they couldn't stand to be away from their families for more than three months and they came back. So he has achieved that goal. And if you notice, it's up here in the upper half of his chart, which is the latter part of our life, really, and our spiritual life. Down here is our earlier years and all of the physical mundane things. Um, up here would be, you know, our thoughts and our spiritual um, pursuits. Now up at his midheaven, it shows Pisces, where he has probably acquired knowledge of what a, how a Pisces really works by living with me. He's had to become more like a Pisces, which is relying on your intuition and not just your academic knowledge. He did go to college. It took him a long time to finish an accounting degree. And that does go along with Gemini. It has to do with details. He is very good at that. Um, because of that, that goes along with being critical. Gemini can be very critical. And when it's here in position one, of the self. Oh my God, is he critical of the self? And only as he's gotten older and we've been able to talk, have I, you know, said to him, oh, it's okay, you made a mistake, it's okay. You know, is he starting to realize this is not good? But uh, yeah, he has achieved that goal of being able to live out the rest of his life with more financial stability. Now, Taurus, I've talked about bringing financial resources and even giving status and promotions. It's not necessarily about wealth, okay? Like I said, it used to be, <coughs> used to be children made you wealthy. Having children 
<coughs> was considered being wealthy. <clears throat> oh, might have to get some hot coffee. Um, I love doing this stuff. I just love it. Um, I'm also hearing about horary astrology, which goes, I guess, hour by hour. And I mean, this light bulb went on in my head, which is, oh my gosh, that's tarot. You're making a query. You're laying out the cards, which really does relate to, I think, the houses. There's basically 12 cards that you use. There's 12 houses. Position six is what's coming up, and it can also relate to the sixth house, which does have to do with health and wellness, but also animals. So, yeah, keep that in mind. You might actually want to start to look into a, the basic reading of a chart of sidereal astrology or traditional astrology. So he, he's definitely um, got aspects to him that he's never been able to express because of his Saturn. I was never really sure about who he was. He's highly intelligent. I mean, I can see that here. Our children are very intelligent. Um, yeah, and I know that he can draw. I've seen him draw very well. But, you know... With all this air, it's all stuck in his head. So he doesn't really know how to express it in the English language. But he has, you know, like I said, now that he's got some money, he's been generous and uh, buys things for me when we go out. But, you know, again, um, if we had been compatible, it would have been easier um, I read a book by Silver Raven Wolf, I mean, excuse me, Sylvia Brown, and she said, some people actually do come into this life to, and they choose to have a silver spoon in their mouth. They want to know what it's like to be loved and protected in every aspect of their life and never ever really have to suffer extreme hardships so that when they come back the next time, they'll know how to probably counsel someone, maybe be a social worker, and maybe even uh, make it somehow, some way, a knowledge, share the knowledge of how important it is for people to have support when they are going through really tough times. And we did have some support. We had a little bit from my sister. We had a little bit from my mother off and on. And uh, sometimes we would get anonymous gifts at our door and uh, we were able to sign up for items, you know, for goodwill for our children. And sometimes the school would have people donate things and my son would come home with a new winter coat. <laughs> but, you know, Sometimes your pride gets in the way and you have to just say, okay, you know, for my child, I'm walking around in clothes with holes in them, but <laughs> our children are taken care of. And so that was our main, that was our main uh, joy. And here with his moon in Aries, you know, I feel like that was the warrior, you know, the father or the mother. But in his case, he had the strength and the will to get up every morning and be the warrior to go to work. To at least pay for the lot rent, and the mortgage on the tiny little mobile home, and the water, and the electricity, you know, I mean, it was hand over fist, but he kept going, he kept going, he kept going, and he knew that he had to, so, and Saturn does provide rewards from time to time, this Saturn doesn't punish you forever. There is light at the end of the tunnel if you've been diligent. So, and there's some other things here too that I'm going to go over with him. But uh, this north node is the most interesting. And so for me, I've, al I've also learned that just because mine is on the opposite side of my ascendant doesn't mean somebody else's north node is going to be 
on the opposite side of the ascendant. And I, 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 I misspoke when I said that in my previous video. So, you know, it's a process of learning and I appreciate you hanging around, you know, and following me on this journey as we are learning together. And sometimes, of course, from your students or your viewers, you are taught. But yeah, when I first looked at this, I went, ah, what? Same thing like with me, right? What? And my friend, when I showed her her, she went, what? And then she said, after a while, I thought, that makes sense. <laughs> so that's it for today. If you're going to do any magics, you would want to have a sigil or a little talisman for Mercury. Um, you might want to work with the spirit Paimon if you're doing any mental work, any dream work, or if you want to actually influence someone mentally. Um, today is ruled by Mercury and Gemini. And then you want to have a multicolored votive. And uh, you would meditate before you went to sleep if you wanted to try to influence someone mentally while you are sleeping. Speaking of that, I dreamed last night that Arnold Schwarzenegger was trying to end a job. Now, actors play parts in our dreams. And I've always referred to my ex-husband as a little Arnold Schwarzenegger because Gemini rules the shoulders, the arms, the upper torso, this area here. And he would do push-ups every morning. Um, and the hands, it also rules the hands. So with his hands, he would do push-ups. He was interested in physical fitness. And people would ask him, where do you go to work out? He said, I just do push-ups. Now he currently has arthritis and fungus on every nail. So isn't that interesting? With my rising being Pisces, it rules the feet, and I've got issues with my foot. Um, but, yeah, this has been an informal video. I just wanted to get on. Well, <laughs> everything is looking really presentable. All right, so um, if you have anything to share that is you know relatable if this has been interesting or helpful then comment below thank you very much for taking the time out to stop by and watch this video and um it's i guess witchy wednesday and i will try to see you again in a couple of days hit the subscribe button stay tuned